play. Anyways, uh, Dead Space, the remake was on sale like two, three days ago. I bought it, played it, beat it twice. This is on, I'm on my second save file, New Game Plus. Uh, played them both on medium. And yeah, I'm just going to talk about it. Uh, just a TLDR, I think it's a great game. If you haven't bought it already, I think uh, if it's ever on sale, you should, you should definitely get it. If you like the original Dead Space, you'll like this game. If you like the Dead Space series, I think you'll like this game. If you're just a fan of like horror horror shooter thingies i think you like this game um anyways that's pretty much the entire like uh sorry i'm just adjusting my blinds uh but that's pretty much it uh, i'm just gonna go on like a little not rant but just like ramble about the game a little bit uh my history of the franchise shit like that um so starting off i played the entire i played the original trilogy dead space one through three uh now I played, out of the trilogy, I played Dead Space 2, like, the most. It, in terms of, like, games as a whole I played, Dead Space 2 is, like, up there. On terms of, like, time spent, like, it's equivalent, almost, it's either greater than or equivalent to, like, time I spent in Destiny and Warframe. I have, like, thousands of hours in those games. Uh, so, I like Dead Space 2 a lot. It's one of my, like, top five games of all time. So, that's why if I, if you have any, like, if you think any of my critiques are weird or a little nitpick, it's because I like Dead Space 2, and I think it's, like, the best out of the trilogy, uh, compared to this game. I don't know, I'm still thinking about it, but, anyways, that's why, uh, again, if I make, it like, a mention, oh, like, in De you're gonna hear like in Dead Space 2 a lot, take a shot every time you hear that, you probably get alcohol poisoning, um, but yeah, just overall, like, stuff I liked was, I really liked the visuals of this game. Now, I'm running this game on, like, the lowest settings, and it still looks fantastic. Um, it's cool. Another thing, too, that I liked is because it's a remake, they had a lot of, they, there's a lot more liberties they can take with the story. And I think a lot of the changes they made were actually really great. For instance, Isaac talking. Um, in the first game, him being a silent protagonist was kind of, it, it was back then, like, you know, early 2000s, where silent protagonists were more common. Um, but... Because it's a remake and they can change dialogue. Not everything has to be one to one. You know, they're able to make Isaac talk and have dialogue and conversations between characters. That makes it a lot more uh, interesting. Also, uh, like new Isaac Lord, that his mother was a unitologist, and you know his father I think was a military dude. And she killed them both. And uh, how he met Nicole, or like the extra audio log where uh, he blamed Nicole for her death. Because another thing too, like in Dead Space Two, when Nicole like tormenting you. Uh, you know, the, you made me, you know, you made me stick with it, you made me die, that entire, like, uh, how she keeps hammering home that you're the reason why she's on here. Um, that additional audio log where he basically blames her parent, uh, his parents' deaths on her, also, like, helped, like, you know, oh, you, this is why you pushed me away. That was really good and really nice touch. Um, another thing, too, is Kendra. Uh, in the first game, uh, the original, she was like, oh, straight up bitch. Even when she betrayed you, she was like, oh, a bitch. Um, in this game, she's a lot more, uh friendlier and like a lot better like a lot she's nicer even when she betrays you she's not an she's not a bitch you know like she's like oh you're one hell of an engineer and even after she tries to kill you you know i i think what they did with kendra was nice she wasn't a complete asshole so when she died i felt a little bit bad uh hammond was more or less the same um i didn't really like hammond in the first game uh or or this game i, did, I like his original voice actor uh more more iconic more distinct voice but a, a weird thing um I guess with Hammond, just like in the first game, I kind of wish they had changed, is that I like how, for the majority of the game, it's like, man, uh, Isaac, you just happen to be next to this thing, go do this thing, oh, Isaac, I know you're an engineer, and you're, you know, you just, you, you're used to fucking fixing shit, but here, go through this ship infested of monsters, necromorphs, and just, uh, fix this thing, you just happen to be, like, uh, when you have to disarm the nuke, it's like, even Isaac, I'm not a fucking nuclear engineer, dude, <laughs> um, it's funny, because, like, when you... When you're talking with him, you're, you don't really interact with Hammond that much in this game. Uh, and most of the time, you interact with Hammond's like, talk, do thing. With Kendra's more like a back and forth, back and forth. And that's why I appreciate that interaction more than with ha uh, Hammond. Also, his death is slightly different. Um, in the first game, he gets murdered by a, a brute. Uh, like, he literally rips off his leg and slams his ass, and then you have to kill the brute. In this game, uh, he gets killed by Chen, and then he blows himself up. So... A nice change they made was that, uh, was Ch the character Chen, he was one of the original people of, of your team, he's the guy that, he gets killed by the uh, first necromorph you see, and he becomes one later, and throughout the story you keep hearing, like, oh, uh, he's, like, stalking, you know, Hammond, and all this other crap, he threw him in an escape pod, shot him off in the valley, picked him up, and he caused all this destruction, so, uh, when Hammond, so, yeah, so, uh, when you get the Singularity Core, and then Chen just live again, because the Marker's influence, he thinks it's Chen, he gets stabbed, and he blows himself up. 
Um, part of me is like, that's kind of dumb. That like, it's clearly a necromorph. How come you don't shoot it? But at, at the same time, uh, as you find out in this game, another great change is what they did with Nicole. Is that yeah, the marker can influence and change people's appearance. All kinds, of, all kinds of crazy shit. So. Yeah, obviously it looks like a necromorph to us, but the hammer could have looked like Chen, just like how uh, Dr. Cross looked like Nicole to us, but in reality, you know, it was Dr. Cross. So, uh, another great change too, I already, t I'm talking, just talked about it, was uh, the change to Nicole. So, in the first game, uh, even in this game, it's kind of apparent that Nicole is like dead or, or it's like some weird marker bullshit going on with her. Um... And in the first game, it was kind of weird because she was, like, interacting with things and stuff like that. When it turns out she was just an apparition the entire time. Uh, compared to this game, where it turns out that Nicole is just Elizabeth Cross, a lady from Hydroponics. But she's, she's I guess, influenced with the marker thinking that you're uh, Temple, like, her boyfriend or whatever. And, you know, so, like, you guys look like the significant other to each other. That's why you're helping each other out. Um, also, I thought it was cool, too, because Daniel's kind of mentioned, like, she was kind of alluding to, like... Yeah, that's not Nicole, or, you know, like, you said, oh, you said Nicole's here? Like, I'm not, I don't see her rig, or stuff like that. Um, so I thought that was really cool. It, 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 uh, and I will tell, that shot, that actually did, uh, <clears throat> that, that actually did surprise me a little bit. Because when Kendra was, like, holding Nicole at gunpoint, I was like, wait, isn't she a fucking ghost? And it's like, oh, no, it's Dr. Cross. Which, again, is another great way to type that loose end, because uh, when you're evacuating the ship, obviously, you know, Dr. Cross still in hydroponics, like, oh, we're just going to leave her on the ship. Turns out, she was actually Nicole the entire time. So that's cool. Um, Mercer 2, they gave him a little more dialogue. Uh, it's interesting, because uh, I think Mercer might be voiced by the same guy. He sounds very familiar. Um, but yeah, I like what they do with Mercer. Obviously, uh, you have a lot more screen time with him. You interact with him a lot more. You know, learning about the hunters, how he made the hunter. Like the side quest about like the hunter dude, Harris. Really cool. Um, the way he kills, uh, his death though is different. Because in the... First, in the original game, he purposely gets infected by a uh, an infector, and he embraces it. In this game, he gets killed by like a tentacle that comes to grab the marker, and he didn't like that. So that's interesting. That little switch up there. Um, also, the way he kills Tempo is also different because um, in the first game, he drives like a screwdriver through his forehead, and the second game, he literally stasis him and blows his brains out, which is cruel as shit. Because uh, yeah, like I, I swear. Maybe it was, like, from, I remember, like, uh, was it Bleach or something? Like, I remember seeing a show or, or some crap where it's like, oh, yeah, when you're slowed down in time and someone's shooting you in the head, you can feel everything because your brain doesn't automatically shut off, so you can, like, feel the blood going to the back of your head. So, like, that's kind of cruel. Um, but, yeah, that was pretty neat. Uh, I think, is there any other story stuff, too? There's, like, slight alterations, like, for instance, the ADS cannon section. Uh, oh, it's like, oh, that's a marker whispering. I was like, what the fuck? Um, so... Overall, story's great. Uh, I liked a lot of the changes. I don't think any of them I necessarily hated. The only one I kind of missed was the, again, the ADS section, where you had to cross, like, the bridge, dodging, like, a barrage of asteroids, and then get to the AD ADS cannon, and then manually mount one and start shooting at asteroids, and then you kind of do that for the boss portion, too. Uh, this one, you kind of just point, and then you click, and then the ADS cannon automatically targets it. I mean, it's kind of, it, it's not like the, it's like a minor. Like, that's not like, oh my god, it was unplayable. But, uh, yeah. Another cool thing is weapons. Visually, a lot of the weapons look great. Um, also, they have different all fires. For instance, uh, line gun. Uh, actually, no, line gun's kind of a bad example. It's similar to the old mines. Like, where the, the, where, like, uh, I think they call it pulse mines or whatever. But, it, now it's a laser trap. You can also, like, deactivate them. Uh, pretty much like the detonator from Dead Space 2. Or maybe it wasn't Dead Space. I, I know, uh, again, my knowledge of Death Space 1 isn't the greatest. I've only beat that game twice. And I forgot the detonator was in the first, was also in the first. I know it's in the second game. Same with the uh, Seeker Rifle. But I don't know if the detonator or the Seeker Rifle was in the first game as well. So, um, the Pulse Rifle has, like, the same thing where you can just kind of shoot, like, a grenade or use, like, as a proximity mine. Uh, so that's neat. Um, and yeah, that's, a, a lot of the guns, uh, a really cool rework was the Contact Beam. I'll show that off. Um, it's literally a beam now, <laughs> so that's really cool. Another cool change was the uh, force gun too, because uh, for uh, as long as I can remember, I think in the original trilogy, like the beam gun and the force gun were just uh, inverses of each other. Like the force gun primary fire was a contact beam secondary fire, uh, and vice versa. So that I thought that was pretty cool. Um, they also the force or the contact beam is also still overpowered as shit. 
kind of, but it's also balanced now, where it takes 3 ammo per shot to use the uh, heavy charge beam. Uh, so that that's like, they actually balance the contact beam. Because uh, if you don't know, I'm pretty sure like throughout the entire trilogy, even in Dead Space 3 you can make a custom one, the contact beam was just overpowered as shit. Especially in Dead Space 2, that thing, <laughs> that thing was so overpowered. Um, still kind of is. So yeah, I'll just show that off in the force gun. Again, I like the I like uh, all the alt fires of the guns. I don't think there's an alt fire that I don't necessarily like. I don't like or something. Um, so yeah, if we uh, like shoot the beam and then you can charge it up. This I believe that does self damage now. Um, also yeah, force gun primary still the same. Uh, alternate fires like this huge like gravity thing and then combo with like other weapons. Uh, speaking of which, I love the flamethrower. The sound design on it is amazing. Uh, and it's really cool. The alt fire does like a firewall. I don't have enough ammo for it, but yeah, I like what they do with a lot of the weapons. Um, again, the only weapon I don't like as much, and, and this is going to go into like kind of my nitpicks, uh, is the pulse rifle. And that's because of how tanky the enemies are in terms of difficulty. This game is definitely harder than the original one. Uh, and that's terms of resource management, uh, and all the other dead space games, uh, enemies drop ammo and credits quite frequently. Especially like Dead Space 1 and 2, you can purposely not pick up guns or have limited guns in your inventory to only get like pl uh, plasma rounds or whatever, or pulse rounds or, you know, plasma cutter ammo. Um, in this game, it doesn't, I don't think it works like that. Uh, or if it does, it, um, ammo doesn't drop as frequently. Most of the time you get credits and credits are like 100, 400, which is not really much when you think about a single, you know, plasma cutter, you know, pack of six is 1,200. So it's not much. Um, so that definitely, they definitely tuned it more towards like survival resource because there's a lot of times where I've noticed that, um, I don't have a surplus of ammo. I only have like a, you know, mag left or like half, you know, uh, but it was still doable. Another change again, I, this is from me not knowing Dead Space 1 as well. Uh, Dead Space 2, you could upgrade your stasis rig to have a natural recharge to it. Um, and Dead Space 1, I'm not sure if it was the same way and Dead Space the remake, uh, that's not true at all. You only have a set amount of charge, then you have to use a stasis pack. So there, there's that. Um, also, another like nitpick is I don't like the visual design of a lot of the necromorphs. Like they look more real. Uh, uh, the way I could describe them, they're a lot more muddy. Uh, something about like seeing the pale white skin and then like the blood and the perdusion sticking out. Like it looked a lot more like nastier to me. A lot of the um, necromorphs look like a kind of like a gooey blob. They're not. They don't look as well defined as they do in the verse or in the original trilogy. Uh, or at least in one and two and three, they kind of had that issue. They're all kind of like, yeah, that's the best way I can describe it. Dead, Dead Space remake, uh, Necromorphs kind of look like the, or give me the similar like art style feeling or vibe to the third game, Dead Space three, where they all kind of like brown and whatever. They don't look like fresh, you know, and you know, pale white and all this other crap. Now, that's just me. I didn't like the visual. Uh, also, they did keep a lot of the original sounds for a lot of the things like stasis packs, med kits, uh, even some of the guns. Um, also, this, awful. I hate the sound of the plasma cutter. <laughs> it sounds awful. Uh, but they also, uh, a lot of the necromorphs, uh, like the hunter still has his, or uh, uh, ubermorph from Dead Space 2 still has this, uh, you know, roar. Uh, the, you know, the baby ones, all the other ones have it too. But the one, the one I didn't like was the, uh, I don't know, oh, I played Dead Space 2 so much. I don't know all the names of necromorphs. But the one that has the exploding arm, uh, it's iconic high bridge shriek isn't there anymore, and I kind of miss that because that would always strike fear in my heart. <laughs> like just hearing that loud ass scream, you're like, oh shit. Um, they also change how brutes work because uh, brutes used to have a uh, in between their arm, like uh, in, in between like the not not their armpits, but in between their shoulder blades, there's like crit spots you could hit. Now you have to have to hit a brute in the back legs, but it goes down pretty easily um, with a fully upgraded plasma cutter. Another thing too, again, is a uh, difficulty. I'm playing this game on medium, but um, the even with a fully upgraded plasma cutter and other weapons, it takes quite a bit for the enemies to go down. Like a Dead Space, you know, and all of the again, I'm like original trilogy to my at least in Dead Space two for sure. Uh, even when you're playing the hardest difficulty, if you could hit the limbs, it didn't take more than two to three shots to kill most uh, necromorphs or at least break off a limb, uh, and you didn't have to. Uh, have like a fully upgraded weapon to do it. You could rely, even with like a basic bitch plasma cutter, it didn't take that much uh, to kill them. So, uh, in this game, like, uh, they're, they're, uh, I keep stuttering. New game plus, there are the enhanced necromorphs. Uh, they do show up in the normal game too, but they, the, they show up 
more frequently in New Game Plus and in areas you don't expect them to. Like, oh, in this area, I only remember one Necromorph jumping. Now there's two and one of them's enhanced. Uh, those guys take a metric fuck ton of damage. Um, now, for instance, I would mention the Contact Beam still overpowered shit. I, I kid you not, one of the enhanced Necromorphs took a maxed out, fully maxed out Contact Beam shot to the fucking chest. And I know before you're saying, well, yeah, of course they take less torso damage, but... If I use that contact beam on anything else, I'd die. Uh, they, it just ate that. So maybe they have, like, severely reduced damage on the torso. But even their limb health is really high, too. Like, even using the contact beam on their limbs took a while. Um, so that, that's about it. Like, in terms of difficulty, it's definitely hard. The enemies are a lot more tanky. Don't necessarily hate it, but it does suck that you don't get a lot of ammo. So you're gonna have to really manage resources. But I guess that's the entire point of being a survival horror uh, shooter. Also... Um, I will say this, and this is more of a critique of the original Dead Space, uh, and this is the reason I like Dead Space 2 so much, is that, um, I keep saying horror, it is horror, obviously, you know, zombies, mutilated stuff, but maybe it's because I played this series for too long, maybe I'm, like, desensitized to this crap, but there weren't, uh, maybe there's, like, one moment where, uh, I had, a, like, uh, I got scared, and that's when I was in my menu, and then one of the, again, ah, oh, I played Dead Space 2, I don't know the names of any of these Macamores. But the one that is, uh, all the guys put together, like, I heard his scream, and he came around the corner, like, oh, and I obviously said, oh, shit, and I, I fucking, I had to switch to my force gun, I just spammed the fuck out of it, that scared the shit out of me. Uh, but, uh, the reason I like Dead Space 2 is that there's a lot of moments where you have, like, hallucinations, whether, is this real or not, and I kind of hope that was in this game. And the reason why I say that is that if you play New Game Plus, you can, uh, these marker fragments appear in every, like, in most of the chapters hidden around the Ishimura, and if you collect them all, you get the alternate ending. Uh, I've seen the alternate ending. I kind of wish, because this game has a really nice attention to detail, uh, I kind of wish the more marker fragments you collect, the more you'd have, like, more, you'd have actually, like, visual hallucinations. Now, it does change the dialogue. Um, I noticed, like, especially near the end, that that was completely different dialogue than my first playthrough, so that's a great change. Um, so that's pretty cool. But, um, back to attention to detail, a lot of cool things. For instance, if you use a force gun on a necromorph, it will literally rip off their skin, and then you see all their muscle, and then you use it again, it'll rip off all their muscle, and then you'll see bone. Really cool detail. Same with, like, you know, burning things with flamethrowers, charred skin. Um, a lot of cool details, like, you can't use the flamethrower in a vacuum. That makes sense from a logic per perspective. That, that's... So, a lot of cool details like that. Again, the guns, too, when you upgrade them, they have, like, all the extra parts on them. So, really cool. Um... And that's, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about in terms of the gameplay. Oh, actually, no. Uh, so this is more nitpick stuff. And, uh, for instance, again, take a shot. Dead Space 2. Dead Space 2 is the only game out of the trilogy where I felt I could use Kinesis during combat. And it felt good. Um, maybe Dead Space 3 too, but, but in Dead Space 3, you can literally make an overpowered weapon. Just, like, really early on, so you don't even need to use Kinesis. But the point being, uh, in this game... The radius of Kinesis is very large, and unlike in, again, take another shot at Dead Space 2, uh, you could only, the only parts of a Necromorph you could really grab were, you know, any bladed limbs, uh, the torso, and then maybe any other severed limb, like maybe the head or something. But in this game, you can grab so many parts off of a Necromorph that, like, if you're in the middle of combat, and you're like, oh shit, I need to grab, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I need to reload, so let me just grab a blade off the dead Necromorph and shoot it back at him. More likely than not, you're gonna grab some random piece of flesh or some other random shit you're not even aiming at, and then you'll it won't do shit. Like as in Dead Space 2, you can just grab it off and just immediately throw it because it's gonna prioritize, you know, the blade. So I kind of obviously this game's seven months old. I don't pr expect a patch, but it would be nice if they were to retool like the uh, the kinesis to actively target the blades and like or, or prioritize the blades over other limbs. Um, that was kind of annoying. Uh, another thing too that's a slight nitpick, again taking another shot at Dead Space 2 comparison, uh, your stasis module, in Dead Space 2, if you were to use stasis, like, so the, you stasis hit the ADS and then do it, right? Uh, if you press triangle, which is the, uh, without aiming, you just refill your stasis. In Dead Space 2, uh, if you're out of stasis energy, like, let me just use all this. If you're out of, uh, energy, you can't, you see how I'm pressing triangle and it won't, um, it won't act automatically refill my stasis. In Dead Space 2, if this happened, it would automatically use the stasis pack, and you could keep, you know, using it. In this game, you have to manually de-scope and then press triangle. Um, slight nitpick, uh, and it's gotten me, not killed, but, like, I've taken damage because of that. 
more of a skill issue. That's the only other nitpick. Um, but that's pretty much it. Uh, in terms of other stuff, uh, performance, this is actually kind of a... I, for me, I'm fine with it, but for other people, not necessarily, they might not like it. So, I'm playing this on PC. I have a Lenovo Legion. I've had this laptop for maybe two or three years. Um, again, I'm not a supercomputer guy, but uh, it has an i7, you know, 8 gigabytes of RAM. It has a graphics card, NVIDIA graphics card, GeoForce, whatever the fuck. Um, I'm not saying this is a top-line computer, but it's this laptop has allowed me to play pretty much any game like ever that I've had or bought recently or in my library. At like 60 FPS, you know, medium to high settings, no problem. This is the only game I've played so far where I'll have, uh, you know, frame drops, uh, some stuttering issues like when people are talking. Uh, certain areas of the game, like, I just have horrible frame rate, so I don't know if that's like an optimization issue with the game, or is like the hardware is failing the laptop. Um, I'm leaning more towards it's the it's on the game's end, uh, because again, I have this in the lowest settings, so I don't know. Also, another thing too is this game is very CPU intensive. Uh, like for instance, it's using like a majority of my CPU right now, like maybe 80-90%. Uh, I the only other game that's kind of like that is maybe Warframe, but even with Warframe, I don't have like this kind of stuttering issue. So I'm leaning towards that this game's more like not optimized as well. I don't know if they're ever gonna make another performance patch for this game, but you know I'm not uh, so I mean no I don't know if it's better on console or not. I have no idea, but um, yeah. So the performance can be kind of an issue. Now again, I'm used to playing Dead Space at 30 FPS because you know because I've played. As a child, that's what I used to play it at. So when it dips down back to 30, I'm like, whatever, I don't really care. But um, it is noticeable, and it does happen quite frequently. Uh, where I'm not really, like, I'll, I'll be, like, at 50-something FPS, or I'll go down to 40. Sometimes I'll go down to 25 in that one marker area, and the cargo bay was really bad. I don't know why. Um, so there's that. But um, overall... Like I said, nitpicks aside, stuff aside, this is a great remake. Um, it makes me... I don't want to say excited or hopeful because this is this is still made by EA who fucked Visceral originally and fucked Dead Space in the ass originally, right? So, but uh, I believe the team that made it is called Motive. Um, so I am hopeful that because from what I've seen, all the reviews, this game has gotten really great reviews. Hopefully, they can do maybe remake the entire trilogy and we'll get a proper ending to this series. Technically, Awakening was an ending, but some people like you know, argue whether that was real or not, or, um, you know, people, like, I think, I'm talking for myself, but I like to have a clear, concise, like, this is what happened, the end, right? Um, but hopefully they remake the other games. Now, if they were to remake a game next, I recommend, uh, Dead Space 3, because Dead Space 2 is perfect with no flaws whatsoever, including not biased. Um, Dead Space 3 is definitely the weakest of the entire trilogy by far. Uh, definitely fun in terms of, like, weapon crafting and just getting overpowered as shit. But, uh, in terms of, like, other stuff it was pretty bad uh it wasn't the worst uh but it but by dead space standards it was pretty bad but anyways um that's pretty much it i think i said everything else to say just doubling back yeah great graphics like the story uh, like the redesigns audio stuff's cool um some performance issues difficult is kind of not not typical of a, what i expect of a dead space game but that's fine at the end of the world um all oh, the paying easter eggs still here uh, I looked it up. If you do beat the game on Impossible, you can get the uh, Devil Horns like in the other games, which is really cool. Uh, and yeah, I think that's it. I'm just trying to. I, I feel like I'm gonna say something. I'm gonna like end it, and I'm like, oh, I forgot to mention this. Um, oh, there is one one last glitch that I don't like, I don't know. I don't think this is fixable. But for instance. I beat the game on New Game Plus, and when you beat on New Game Plus, you get an option to buy, like, the, uh, I don't know if it's called a Marauder suit. It's basically the military suit from the people in the Valor. You can buy that for, like, 90,000 credits. Um, I've noticed this, too. When you switch to any suit, the previous suit gets lost. Like, for instance, when I was, um, on a level 3 suit, and I went back to level 1, uh, my level 3 suit was gone. I could switch to my level 2, my level 1, or my, you know, legacy rig, but I couldn't switch back to the level three so right i don't know if there's like a fix for that or whatever but i can't put back on the marauder suit thing whatever which is fine because i don't really care for it i mean actually we can test it out maybe if i uh, equip this level five suit uh it will i don't know um bring it back my inventory also uh they did keep it like in dead space one where you can take where he takes off and puts on his helmet it's not like uh like the 
I don't know describe it like in Dead Space 2 and 3 where like it automatically like deploys on your face and shit. Uh, so there's that. Um, let's see. No, it's still not there. So I'm guessing that's a bug. Um, there, there has been another bug where I was just, I couldn't do anything in my menu after to reload. Um, but in terms of that, uh, everything else is pretty good. No, like, outside that one instance, and obviously this uh, suit instance, there hasn't been any other major bugs I've noticed. Um, also, yeah, there's side quests. I didn't mention that. But that's it. I think I've been talking long enough. Anyways, give the game, if you, uh, if you like Dead Space, the original trilogy, or just, like, if you're looking for a good game to play, I think this is a great game. Um... So yeah, you should probably get it. Uh, perfectly on sale, you know. You know, Steam. If you have it on Steam, they do Steam sales quite often. I think it still might be on sale by the time of recording this video. I don't know if it's on sale on PlayStation or Xbox, but. You know. Anyways, thanks for watching.